Hi, this is Tom, and in this video, I'm going to go through adrenal insufficiency. And you can find written notes at zerotofinals.com slash adrenal insufficiency, or in the endocrinology section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge at members.zerotofinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Adrenal insufficiency is where the adrenal glands do not produce enough steroid hormones, particularly cortisol and aldosterone. Steroid hormones are essential for life, which makes the condition life-threatening. Let's start with some basic physiology. There are two adrenal glands found in the abdomen. The adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys. The outer part of the adrenal gland is called the cortex and the inner part is called the medulla. The adrenal cortex produces two types of steroid hormones. Cortisol, which is a glucocorticoid, and aldosterone, which is a mineralocorticoid. Glucocorticoids, like cortisol, help the body to cope with stress, increase the blood glucose level, regulate the immune system, and reduce inflammation. If there is not enough cortisol, the blood glucose level will fall causing hypoglycemia or a low glucose level. The effect on the glucose level is why cortisol is called a glucocorticoid. Mineralocorticoids, such as aldosterone, help to regulate the balance of electrolytes and the blood pressure. They act on the nephrons in the kidneys to increase sodium reabsorption from the urine to the blood in the distal tubule, increase potassium secretion from the blood to the urine in the distal tubule, and increase hydrogen secretion from the blood to the urine in the collecting ducts. When sodium is reabsorbed by the kidneys, water will follow it by osmosis. This leads to increased intravascular volume, which is the volume of fluid inside blood vessels, and this increases the blood pressure. When there's not enough aldosterone, the amount of sodium in the blood will fall, causing hyponatremia, or a low sodium. The effect on sodium and potassium, which are minerals in the blood, is why aldosterone is called a mineralocorticoid. Let's go through the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The release of cortisol by the adrenal glands is controlled by two structures in the brain called the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland, specifically the anterior part of the pituitary. The hypothalamus releases corticotropin-releasing hormone, or CRH. CRH stimulates the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH. ACTH stimulates the adrenal glands to release cortisol. Cortisol travels to the body tissues to carry out its effects. It also travels to the brain and it has a suppressing effect on the hypothalamus and the pituitary. This is called negative feedback. Too much cortisol suppresses the release of CRH and ACTH. This means less CRH and less ACTH, which results in less cortisol release. 
When there's not enough cortisol, there's less negative feedback, which means the hypothalamus and pituitary release more CRH and more ACTH to stimulate the adrenal glands to release more cortisol. This helps to keep the cortisol levels within normal limits and relatively stable over time. Next, let's talk about the causes of adrenal insufficiency. Addison's disease refers specifically to when the adrenal glands have been damaged, resulting in reduced cortisol and aldosterone secretion. This is called primary adrenal insufficiency. It's primary as the problem is with the direct source of the cortisol, the adrenal glands. The most common cause is autoimmune, where the immune system gets confused and inappropriately attacks and damages the adrenal glands. Low cortisol means reduced negative feedback on the hypothalamus and pituitary, leading to increased CRH and ACTH. Secondary adrenal insufficiency occurs where inadequate ACTH is produced by the pituitary gland, for example after surgical removal of the pituitary. Inadequate ACTH means low stimulation of the adrenal glands and insufficient release of cortisol. It is secondary as the problem is one step back from the adrenal glands. Tertiary adrenal insufficiency occurs when the hypothalamus produces inadequate CRH. This is usually due to suppression by exogenous glucocorticoids. For example, long-term treatment with prednisolone. Taking prednisolone or other glucocorticoid steroids makes the hypothalamus believe that there's too much steroids in the system, which means it shuts off the production of CRH. Inadequate CRH and ACTH mean low adrenal stimulation and reduced cortisol secretion. This is tertiary as the problem is two steps back from the adrenal glands. Next let's talk about the presentation. The symptoms of adrenal insufficiency include fatigue, muscle weakness, muscle cramps, dizziness and fainting, thirst and craving salt, weight loss, abdominal pain, depression and reduced libido. There are two key examination findings in adrenal insufficiency. Patients with primary adrenal insufficiency can have bronze hyperpigmentation of the skin, particularly in the skin creases on the palms of the hands, in scar tissue, on the lips, and the buccal mucosa on the inside of the cheek. In primary adrenal insufficiency, the lack of negative feedback on the pituitary gland leads to the release of excessive ACTH. ACTH stimulates melanocytes in the skin, causing them to produce more melanin, which results in bronze hyperpigmentation. The other examination finding is hypotension, or a low blood pressure, particularly postural hypotension. When comparing the blood pressure with the patient lying down and then with them standing up, there is more than a 20 millimeters of mercury drop in blood pressure when they're standing.
A Tom tip for you, if you see a patient in an OSCE exam who may have adrenal insufficiency, check for a medical bracelet which is worn to alert medical services that they're steroid dependent in case they become unconscious. Next, let's talk about the investigations. On a blood test, hyponatremia or a low sodium is the key biochemical finding. This is sometimes the only presenting feature. Other potential blood test findings include hyperkalemia or a high potassium, hypoglycemia or a low glucose, raised creatinine and urea due to dehydration and hypercalcemia or a high calcium. The early morning cortisol level taken between 8 and 9 a.m. may be helpful but it's often falsely normal. The short synactin test is the test of choice for diagnosing adrenal insufficiency. This involves giving a dose of synactin, which is synthetic ACTH, and monitoring the blood cortisol before and at 30 minutes and 60 minutes after the dose. When the adrenal glands are healthy, the synthetic ACTH stimulates the release of cortisol. In primary adrenal insufficiency, where the adrenal glands are damaged, the ACTH does not stimulate the release of cortisol. A failure of the cortisol levels to at least double indicates primary adrenal insufficiency. Adrenocorticotropic hormone, or ACTH, can be measured directly on a blood sample. The ACTH level is high in primary adrenal insufficiency, as the pituitary is producing lots of ACTH. Without cortisol, there is no negative feedback to control ACTH production. The ACTH level is low in secondary and tertiary adrenal insufficiency. Autoantibodies may be present in autoimmune adrenal insufficiency, including adrenal cortex antibodies and 21 hydroxylase antibodies. Further imaging may be needed to assess the cause including a CT or MRI scan of the adrenal glands and an MRI scan of the pituitary. Next, let's talk about management. Treatment of adrenal insufficiency is with replacement steroids. Hydrocortisone, a glucocorticoid, is used to replace cortisol. Fludrocortisone, a mineralocorticoid is used to replace aldosterone if aldosterone is also insufficient. Doses are titrated to the signs, symptoms and electrolytes. The doses should not be missed as they're essential to life. The doses are doubled during an acute illness, for example during operations or infections, to match the normal steroid response to illness. Patients are given a steroid card, ID tag and emergency letter to alert emergency services that they're dependent on steroids for life. Patients and close contacts are taught how to give intramuscular hydrocortisone in an emergency. Finally, let's talk about adrenal crisis. Adrenal crisis, also known as Addisonian crisis, describes an acute presentation of severe adrenal insufficiency, where the absence of steroid hormones leads to a life-threatening emergency. 
Patients may present with reduced consciousness, hypotension or low blood pressure, hypoglycemia or a low glucose level, hyponatremia or low sodium, and hyperkalemia or high potassium. Adrenal crisis may be the initial presentation of adrenal insufficiency, or it can be triggered by infection, trauma, or another acute illness in a patient with established adrenal insufficiency. Management of adrenal crisis involves an ABCDE approach to initial assessment and arranging transfer to hospital, intramuscular or intravenous hydrocortisone to replace the missing steroids, intravenous fluids, correcting the hypoglycemia, for example with intravenous dextrose, and careful monitoring of the electrolytes and the fluid balance. Now head over to members.zerodefinals.com to test yourself on how much you understood and remembered from this video. The members site contains illustrated flashcards, multiple choice questions and short answer questions designed to perfectly complement the Zero to Finals resources. It also features an Anki-like fact trainer tool which you can use to train your knowledge on the key facts you need for your medical exams. You test yourself on the fact, then rate how difficult you found that fact. The site then spaces out your repetitions and tells you when you're due to review it again. Going over the facts with space repetitions helps ensure they stay in your long-term memory. A link to the member site is in the video description.